What's going on guys, Andrew Pilikaki here back with another video. Today I'm going to be looking at the Leafs 4-3 win over the Detroit Red Wings in the shootout. For some reason today I'm having a problem saying Detroit Red Wings. I don't know why, maybe it's a tongue twister for me, but what a victory for the Leafs because Rasmus Sandin was impressive. I'm just going to go over the goalie stats right off the bat like I usually do. Now, um, the shots on goal just were completely... Um, different. I mean, in terms of the fact that the Leafs definitely had more shots. Uh, it, listen, games like this are fun to watch. I don't know why a lot of people don't like watching these games, but regardless, Joseph Wall came in in the third period, stopped seven of eight shots. Uh, Michael Hutchinson stopped eight of ten shots uh, for the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, Jonathan Bernier, who was very good tonight, stopped 34 of 37 total shots. Now, just going over the goals, uh, Svechnikov scored the first goal of the game after a scramble. That was his second of the preseason, assisted by Turgeon and Luko Svechis. Again, I could be saying that completely wrong, but no disrespect to him. Uh, he got an assist on this play. Svechnikov, that's his second, like I mentioned. It was a quick little shot five hole goal uh, it was it was a big mess but I mean good goal for him second period Darren Archibald scored from Adam Brooks and Jeremy Bracco uh, and then that was um, the next goal was followed by Chris Terry his second of the year for Detroit that made it 2-1 Detroit assisted by Hicketts and Elson then Matt Reed tied up the game Matt Reed has looked pretty good for the Toronto Maple Leafs they're gonna have to sign him to at least play for the Marlies or something if that's the opportunity that he would like or maybe he becomes an extra forward or the Leafs tell him to play for the Marlies and that he'll be an eventual call-up if they need him which we're hoping no injuries knock on wood but Eventually, you're going to need extra forwards up there. That was assisted by Kenny Augustino. In the third period, Hudson Yelnick scored on the power play. Uh, that was assisted by Timo Kivihalmi, who also had a pretty good game, and that play was set up by him. And then in the third period, under a minute left, Giovanni Smith, former Kitchener Ranger, former Guelph uh, Storm, scored uh, his first of the preseason. He also had a pretty good fight. Um tonight as well uh, and that was assisted by Shvechnikov and Kasky and I believe oh man this is off the top of my head I can't remember who was in the fight now I'm gonna have to look at the roster it was Gaudet oh my goodness Gaudet actually had a pretty good game he was sticking up for uh, Sandine in this game now I want to bring up the obvious in a couple minutes here, but a lot of, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of people don't like watching these games because it's not the the whole roster, and you know it's not everybody on the team that's playing. But these games are good to see what players are on the bubble who could possibly make this team. Now, guys like Augustino played really good. Aberg, like honestly, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this was a really good team effort. If you watched the full game, I was impressed with just about everybody. Engvall had a couple nice rushes. Uh, good, like I said, Gadet, I think that he played really well tonight. He got 17 minutes. Ben Harper wasn't wasn't that bad. I mean, Marinson only had one mess up there at the end. He was slipping all over the place, um, but that's fine. Timothy Liljegren, it looks like the Leafs aren't very high on him right now, which is unfortunate. I had him penciled in as the guy that was going to be the surprise that made the team, but it looks like Rasmus Sandin is going to be the guy. And people say Sandin. I still think it's Sandin by the way they've been saying it, but if people would prefer Sandin or if that's what he goes by, then that's what it will be. Like I said, Matt Reed played really good. Nick Patan, there was rumors that Nick Patan was kicked off the ice yesterday, depending on when you're watching this, the day before the game uh, or game day, that Nick Patan was kicked off the ice by Mike Babcock for not skating fast enough in a bad skate. That was all over Twitter. I'm not sure how accurate that is, um, but Patan played real good tonight. He was quick. Um, Timoshov, another guy who's battling for that spot. Tomorrow, it's looking like Korshkov might be the guy that plays uh, with the Toronto Maple Leafs in the main group because he played pretty well before. Maybe Babcock isn't sold on that fourth line. Uh, and you'll see Gravel and Hall, I believe, as the bottom pairing in that game as well. But I would imagine, with the way Rasmus Sandin played tonight, 30 minutes and 54 seconds. And keep in mind, he played like half the overtime period. So like he got a ton of minutes. Um, he, he was fantastic. I honestly wanted to see to see Babcock give him a shot in the shootout. I think that would have been hilarious, but you go with the guys that can usually get it done in the shootout. I mean, Jeremy Bracco had a nice little goal there, and Timoshov almost pulled off the Kucherov there, as my guy, producer guy Phil tweeted, but uh, we all know the Kucherov is a pretty sweet move, but... Uh, again, I was I liked Kivi Homie tonight, but I liked the effort of Augustino. I, I really liked um, Timoshov. 
I really liked Patan tonight. Patan really stood, stood out for me. And a lot of people didn't like my comments last game when I said uh, I didn't notice Patan as much. I went back and watched extended highlights of that game, and it, I was wrong. Patan was pretty good in that game. It, you know, you got to remember, it's the preseason. Sometimes you zone out on certain plays, and of course, I must have missed something real good. But that's that's what happened in this game. I think Rasmus Sandin, or Sandin, however you want to pronounce it, was the story playing over a half an hour, gaining the trust of the coach, making smart plays in overtime when he was getting tired, like that little button hook that he did, um, the, the good defensive play in overtime, the, the good hand-eye coordination in overtime, but he did it all in during the game too, but it was apparent in overtime. Babcock kept throwing him out there to say, listen kid, you want this spot and you want to prove that you can play on the bottom pairing? You can do it. I mean, Martin Marinson played 26 minutes tonight. That just shows you the, the difference right there. Like, that was the top pairing. Rasmus Sandin was electrifying. I haven't seen Babcock's press press conference, but I'd imagine it's going to be a good one. So I'm going to check that out. I'm going to be filming my uh, preview for the game for the Toronto Maple Leafs, and then that'll be up in the morning. Uh, like I said, I've been under the weather. Uh, and, uh, I mean, there are some people in the comments saying, we, we don't care like what, that you're saying that you're under the weather. Dude, listen... You wouldn't imagine the comments I get when people are asking me why I'm talking like a certain way. I'm just informing people that I'm not feeling good. Relax, everybody. Nobody is going to get hurt from me saying that. Now, hopefully you guys enjoyed this um, reaction to the game. Guys, today's just been one of those days. My head's all over the place. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Make sure to check out my preview for tomorrow's game, the Toronto Maple Leafs main group. Of course, without the, the couple guys that might make the team from tonight's group. Make sure to check that out. Make sure to subscribe if you're new. I'd love to have more hockey conversations with you. Join the squad. Let's get to 7,000 subscribers. I appreciate you all, as always. And I'll see you in the next video or stream. And if you're, a, if you're not a Leaf fan, there's other NHL teams on this channel. I talk about all teams. Peace.